Welcome to this short briefing. We are going to talk about Operations Engineering Built-ins, the OEBs. OEBs are an important element of your flight operations. As you know, OEBs are not only operations related, but may also be safety related. Correct application of OEBs is important for the safe and efficient operation of the aircraft. When operating an aircraft, the flight crew must know the OEBs applicable to this particular aircraft and they must strictly follow the associated information. Not correct or irrelevant application of an OEB may directly impact the safety of the flight. But first, a rapid reminder. What is an OEB? The OEB is a procedure defined to take into consideration a significant technical deviation on a given aircraft. An OEB may provide a revised or new technical information, procedure or limitation. When a technical deviation is observed on an aircraft, a system or a computer standard, Airbus identifies the most suitable way to address this issue. All mitigations such as maintenance tasks, inspection, maintenance planning changes or retrofit are considered. When none of these solutions is suitable, an operation mitigation is considered. Then, if relevant, an OEB is published to provide the flight crew with the procedure to indicate this mitigation. When the decision to issue an OEB is made, we must define the color of this OEB. As you all know, we use two different colors for OEBs, red or white. To define it, we will answer the question, is the safety of the flight affected if the flight crew does not apply the OEB? If not, the OEB will be white. If yes, the OEB will be red. The red OEB may be associated with a temporary revision of the flight manual. Additionally, an airworthiness directive can be published. However, whatever the color, red or white, the, OEB, the airline must manage the OEB with high attention and without delay. Note that airlines are given a 30 days period to implement the a white OEB on the impacted aircraft. Appropriate application of an OEB is a key element to the flight safety and efficiency. Therefore, it is of utmost importance that flight crew know which OEBs are applicable to their aircraft they are flying and they are able to apply it quickly when and only when necessary to ensure safe and efficient operation of the aircraft. For this, Airbus provides in the flight crew operating manual and quick reference handbook a list of the applicable OEB for each individual aircraft. As per the Airbus standard operating procedure, in the preliminary cockpit preparation, before the first flight of the day, the flight crew must review the list and content of applicable OEBs. If the same crew performs several flights the same day, the recommendation is to review at least the list of effective OEBs before each flight. This step is important because among a fleet, aircraft may have different configuration and some OEBs may be applicable to part of the fleet only. In addition, one OEB may become applicable to one aircraft or may be cancelled for another aircraft following a retrofit of the technical solution. Flight crew must not only review the list of OEB, but ensure that they are both aware of the OEB entry point, I mean, when to apply the OEB procedure. We are in the cockpit. Pilots are conducting the preliminary cockpit preparation before the first flight of the day. They just completed the performance data computation and cross-check. Are you ready to check OEB with me, Captain? Yes, go ahead, please. OEB 4, issue 1. It's a white OEB. Nose landing gear. ECAM entry, none. OEB number 10, issue 1. On ground engine stall at acceleration from idle. Procedure. ECAM entry, none. And we have a last OEB. OEB 12, issue 1. It's a white OEB. ELEC Gen 1, 2 fault. ECAM entry, ELEC Gen 1 fault. ELEC Gen 2 fault. Okay. ECAM entry, ELEC Gen 1 fault, ELEC Gen 2 fault. Procedure. Apply the ECAM procedure, but do not perform the generator reset, even if requested by the procedure. Okay, okay. thank you very much. Operations engineering built-in may provide a procedure associated with a flight phase or one SOP action. It can also be applicable for some aircraft system failure or indication on the ECAM or any other cockpit indicator. In most cases, it is linked with an ECAM alert. The flight crew must know and recognize these entry points. ELEC 
Gen 1 Fault. Confirm on the SD page. Yes, sir. Confirm on the overhead panel. Yes, sir. Okay, we have an OEB for this uh, ECAM, right? Yes, Captain. OEB 12, ELEC Gen 1 2 Fault. ECAM entry, ELEC Gen 1 Fault. Okay. Procedure. Apply the ECAM procedure, but do not perform the generator reset, even if requested by the procedure. Okay. ECAM action. ELEC Gen 1 Fault. Gen 1 off, then on. As per OEB, so we disregard the reset. Okay. Gen 1 off. Clear ELEC. Clear ELEC. Status. Stop ECAM. No normal checklist. No more reset. Continue ECAM. Cat 3 single only. Inopsis Cat 3 dual. Main galley Gen 1. Remove status. Remove status. ECAM actions completed. On the S320, S330 and S340 aircraft, the OEB reminder function reminds pilots to refer to an OEB procedure upon the triggering of the associated ECAM alert. This function is an help, but even if the airline uses this function, pilots must be aware of the applicable OEB and be ready to apply OEB procedure even without the OEB reminder. To conclude on this briefing, Operations engineering built-ins are published by Airbus in order to provide an operational mitigation to a technical deviation that may be detected on a system. In order to be able to apply an OEB when appropriate, both flight crew members must be fully aware of the OEB that are applicable to their aircraft, as well as their associated entry. This is why the Airbus standard operating procedure requires that OEBs be checked during the cockpit preparation. I hope you enjoyed this briefing and I see you around for the next one.